got some cash. I got some. <laughs> Galactic Phobos. Do you really think I came here to talk about being a cake boss? Really? If you don't get your ass back to TLC. And girl, ain't nobody calling you, girl. That is so sad, girl. When they just be popping up like, call this number. No one's calling you, girl. Girl. Y'all got me dead. So some of y'all have heard this story on IG, but I thought it was fitting for the Periscope fam. Um, this is just some regular ass lip gloss. I don't know about no teeth gloss. No, no teeth gloss. But it's pinkalicious. Long shot. Exactly, bitch. Exactly. What wig review? What are you talking about? What wig? What's going on? Bitch, how you gonna come into a video that's a story time and ask me about a fucking wig, though? I'm fucking dead. And I'm rocking natural right now. I can't even do a wig review if I wanted to. Where's the wig gonna go? Girl. Honestly, I couldn't find no bad pictures of RuPaul from the motherfucking main stage. And I didn't want to take no shitty ass picture on my damn MacBook. That was not gonna be the way for me. So... That's what happened. Again, I don't know why people ask me fucking questions on a story time. Can we get back to the motherfucking story time, bitch? Like, honestly. Like, y'all see how fucking selfish the motherfuckers from IG are? That's why I'm on Periscope now. Because I'm trying to get some new people to fuck with me. Because I feel like the people on IG selfish. They be, like, thinking that I owe them shit. They be thinking they could just question me about shit that I didn't do. Just try to come for me all the time. <laughs> So real talk, like, I need some new niggas come through to the IGs. They be bullying me, bitch. They be coming for me for no reason. They be dragging with no wagon, bitch. Like, honestly. So come through to the IGs. Help me. <laughs> help me. Some of them be acting up. No shade, no pink lemonade. So look, let me get into this. As I said, I have already told this story. Exactly, come through with the shrimp. I have already told this story to other people on the IG. So the IG people are going to be extra through this story because they already heard it. So they're going to be like, we heard it. So the Periscope family, thank you for joining us. Thank you for being here. Thank you for accepting me. All right, so... At the time, I was a young Tatiana, all right? I was out here. I was, I was, you know, this is going to sound fucked up, but I was feeling secure in a relationship that I did not want to be in, girl. And there's nothing like being secure in a relationship that is bad. There's nothing like being with somebody and it's actually not fruitful to you, but it's working out. Like, somehow it's working out, but this shit is not where you want to be. It's not good. It's just, it's just seemingly convenient. Um, and with that being said, you know, I was clearly unhappy in this relationship, but instead of leaving, my goofy ass decided to entertain an old flame. Now, I obviously need names for these characters, so people, please help me in the comments. I need a character for the Nick, for the old nigga. I need a character, I need a name for the old nigga, a name for the new nigga. So who's the, what's the name of the old nigga? What's the name of the OG? Bob, okay. We're gonna go with Bob. And we're gonna go with Chris for the second dude because it's more believable. I'm not gonna say Daquan. These are both white men. Anyways, so Bob and I were just having a very stale, boring ass, boiled pork chop ass relationship. And so, you know, when my, when I heard from Chris, because that's the thing, 
Chris actually came before Bob. I'm not trying to be M. Night Shyamalan, but let me tell you right now, this is a plot motherfucking twist, girl. Yes, Chris was the main before Bob, girl. Chris was the nigga that I wanted to give my oils to. For y'all that don't know Philly slang, oils is pussy juice. So I wanted to give him my pussy juice. Um, and... You know, for whatever reason, I don't want to go into that backstory with Chris, but Chris and I happened to get into a car accident, girl, that was his fault, girl, but I could see how he could feel some type of way about me, um, and then we ended up reconnecting through the internet, of course, you know, the wonderful why and the weird, um, so... When him and I actually linked back up, he told me that he had stopped communicating with me because the car accident made him feel embarrassed. And I could understand that in retrospect, but to be quite honest, when he said that, all my old feelings came back. All of my old feelings resurfaced. And it was at that point, you know, that we were communicating that I started to feel like, me and Bob were going to really be done. And I was happy. But I feel like I wasn't strong enough. You know how you ever be in a relationship and you don't feel like you're strong enough to just leave? Like how you feel like you got to have like an army, a tribe, like a companion to help you get the fuck out of that shit. So I really was just feeling like I was getting closer to Chris because I knew me and Bob was not really, we was not working out. And I knew Chris wanted me in a way that Bob could never want me. You know what I mean? Like Bob wanted me because I was good on paper. You know, I made him probably like, for, to be honest, I feel like my ex, I think Loki, he was a feeder. I don't know for sure, but he fed me a lot of food. <laughs> and I'm just saying, like, I don't know if that was his pleasure, but he really did hook it up. But we weren't, but me and my ex, Bobby, we were, as I said, we were not, we were both not happy, but I think he, again, as I said, it was working out, so I think, like, we were both kind of just like, whatever. So, when me and Chris, that's where a long shot, I can't relate. So, me and Chris, um, deeply angry. So, me and Chris started reconnecting again, right? And it got to a point where I wanted to meet up. And so, because I wanted to meet up, you know, I had to be cautious, rigorous. You know what I mean? I had to be kind of slick because I had, because I was like, I was dating Bob, but like we were together. And so, you know, when you're dating somebody, they be knowing where the fuck you be at and shit. You know, and then if you date somebody long enough, they be knowing when you're not where the fuck you're supposed to be, bitch. They be knowing too much. So, Bob. It had to be very low key. So I lied to Bob. I told Bob, I did a lot of lying um, in this situation. So I told Bob that I was going to work on a Saturday. I never worked Saturdays. So on Saturday, what I did is I left the house in the middle of the afternoon when Bob was out doing something with his family and I took the bus. Yes, no evidence, no Uber report. Because at the time, I don't, actually, bitch, I don't even think Uber was a thing. I think we were taking cabs and shit. This was a long time ago, bitch. This was before Uber. So, I was like, I took the bus, bitch. I took public transport. Threw away my ticket. <laughs> so, anyways. Him and I met at this fucking park near my job. And I had stopped at the liquor store because I was nervous. And I was like, what, what do you do when you get nervous? Get a little tipsy, you know? Because I figured, like, I'll get a little tipsy to have a personality drink. And then I'll go meet up with this guy who was, like, the love of my life and who I wanted to lose my virginity to. So, no pressure, you know? No, no big deal. <clears throat> so I was scared shitless. And so when I went and I bought those four locos. And again, this was so long ago. This is, this is one of the original four locos was out, bitch. Original Four Locos. Not this bullshit that they got now. Original OG Four Loco. So I bought two OG Four Locos. I wasn't sure if he was going to want to drink with me. I wasn't sure if
sure if he was going to want to get in on this. I was in Massachusetts. So I'm drinking my Four loco, waiting for him to pull up, you know, and bitch, when he pulls up, girl, I just felt that same old thing, girl. I felt that same old thing. Like, as soon as he pulled up and he got out the car, I was like, He was looking so good. Bitch, and he was one of those dudes that went, like, kind of OD with the cologne, but it never smelled too wild. Like, he had a very light scent, but he would, like, have it to where when he, like, walked, the wind would just pick it up, bitch. Like, you could stand next to him and get that whiff on you. Like, it'll just get on you, bitch. And so... He was smelling so fresh, bitch. I think it was an Egyptian motherfucking musk or some shit. I was like, come through Egyptian musk. Ghost 5150. Maybe so. So anyways. Homeboy decided... That, you know, he was going to sit in front of me looking gorgeous as fuck. First of all, also, bitch, let me get into his outfit, girl. He came up to meet me, bitch, in a suit. Girl. I'm talking black sport coat, black slacks, goes 5150. You are looking like a damn slimer. You gotta go. And so... <laughs> to a park, bitch. It was a nice park. Like, it was a nice park. But, like, and I'm not gonna lie, bitch. Can I tell you what I was wearing, bitch? I was wearing this OD long. Um, I was, like, 20. <coughs> I was 21. And he was, like, 28. Nah. <laughs> Big green park. No, it was, uh, the park... On fucking damn, I want to say Boylston. I want to say Boylston, but it's whatever street the Berkeley School of Music is on. Like I literally am like blanking, which is so cray. Cause like I've lived so many places. Sometimes I can't remember street names, or I'll or I'll say the wrong street name, and then Sydney will be like, "Bitch." Like, this ain't New Orleans. And I'm like, oh. <laughs> it's like, it happens to me all the time. So, um, anyways. So, we met up at this park. He was wearing, like, a nice-ass outfit. Like, he was looking really cute. He had, like, an earring, bitch. Um. No, looking back, I don't even think it was too much. I think, like, he mentally was in the space that I needed him to be at at 28 for me to be 21, if that makes sense. Not to mention, I feel like because I, like, went through trauma, like, at such a young age, and I had to grow up, like, really fast, I feel like when I met him, like, the first time, definitely was too young. But, like, when I met him the second time, I was definitely way more in control of myself, and I think that's why we ultimately didn't work out. Um, because I feel like you know, I think, like, we had both gone through trauma, which helped us bond, but I feel like we went through different trauma, which is kind of why we didn't really relate all the way, but, um, so, so we're at the park, we're talking, and, like, it's wild, because, like, I just felt like the old times again, and so, I was like, fuck Bob, <laughs> I literally was plotting, like, from the day one, I was like, yo, me and him are about to get back together, like, I could see it, like, I could see him and me, I could see us, like, really picking up and, like, starting over, and I was getting hype, and I remember, like, that afternoon, like, when he drove me home, I was so shook that, like, Bob was about to be home, but part of me didn't give a fuck, like, part of me was kind of just, like, I don't even care if he sees me get out this car, and bitch, okay, I'm 21, I'm living in Boston, nobody drives, like, no one I know fucking drives, like, I had one friend that drove, and that bitch fucked it up, because she's a goofy hoe, and so, nobody I knew really drove, so when he gave me a ride, um, you know, when he was, when he was, uh, you know, when he pulled up in that Chrysler 300, I'm not gonna lie, I was phased. I was definitely phased. I was like, ooh, I am phased. I don't hang around three Chrysler 300s every 
every day. So I was kind of just like, ooh. I was like, okay. Okay. And it was a cute little black with a grill. He got a, he got a cute little uh, motherfucking chain mail on the front of the shit. It was clean, though. So... Anyway, so it was really cute, you know, so he's driving me home, and like, I remember like when we were driving home, he was driving hella fast down Calm Ave, and we were listening to Biggie's Give Me The Loot, and I knew every word, and he knew every word, and it was just like, lit as fuck, like, it was just like, you know what I mean, like, just some, just some thought, just some thought shit, like, I was like, I just know so I was like, you have to be together. <laughs> exactly. We were doing the fucking most. That that shit. I was like, <laughs> so. Anyways, <clears throat> he finally takes me home. I get out the car, go into the house. Nobody's home, and I just sat there and I was like. Gucci or not, I'm a G cause I got all my hot girls with me and we dance around and bounce those cities. Dance around and bounce those cities. Dance, dance, dance around and bounce those cities. Yeah. Um, honestly, I am a thought for loving Sarat. Oh my goodness. Some of my little hairs are trying not to live and blend. But anyways, you know, hair repairs are real on the lives. You know what I mean? We're doing it live. So, basically, um, at this point, you know, when I'm home, I'm just trying to reflect on my day, because, real talk, there was a reason I was with Bob, that nigga got money, and he never stunted on me for doing what I wanted to do with my fucking time, I think that's a big thing, is like, at the end of the day, Bob never played me, um, of course, but Bob never played me when it came to, like, me wanting to do YouTube or work in hostels or fly to New Orleans. Like, he was sad, but, like, he still supported me. So I feel like, in ways, like, there were healthy parts of the relationship. But I feel like, was it healthy or was it just he had the money to not have to, you know, worry about it? You know what I mean? I feel like some relationships you can't leave because, like, you're going to fuck up that person's life, you know? So I just feel like, in ways, you know... He never needed me in that regard. Like, he never needed me financially. So, he didn't ever try to stop me from doing anything I wanted to do. He never tried to guilt me, and I never felt guilty for leaving him because I knew that if I left him, he could still live. You know what I mean? Like, I knew that, like, I wasn't the reason why he was alive. Um, for the most part, yes, he was more faithful than me. I can say that. I feel like I was steady stepping out because I feel like when I met him, as I said, like, Bob, I met Bob after I met Chris, and me and Chris fell out on some goofy shit, like, he got into a car accident, and I guess, like, because we had met online, and we hadn't, we didn't know each other super, super well, like, of course it was embarrassing, guys, Bob was also, like, 27, <clears throat> big wall, get out with your ugly ass, looking like a damn jackal. Just a low down, dirty monkey, whatever we go. Anyways, so, um, Bob and I had some conversations. And here's the thing. Me and Bob had went on a cruise right before the situation. And so when me and Bob went on that cruise, the whole time we were, like, en route to the cruise and the whole time leading up to the cruise, we were fighting and we were talking to each other very ugly and we were saying shit like, you know, after the cruise, I'm done with you. It was mainly me saying that shit because he was just... He was just, like, on my last fucking nerves at this point, and I started to feel kind of like, you know what, I was like, after the cruise, like, we're done, and so it was kind of fucked up, because, like, when we actually got onto the boat, and we actually got into the room, it's kind of like, we just kind of stopped beefing, it was really weird, it was like, once we got into the room and just looked at each other, it was kind of like, yo, we made it here, like, we flew on this plane, we didn't die, we're about to be on this cruise, you know, this room is lavish as fuck, like, we've been waiting for months to go on this cruise, so, like, you know, let's just have a good time, let's not be ugly, and so it was nice, you know, we had a lot of fucking cute memories, there were a lot of wild memories, too, I want to talk about the cruise, 
behind the scenes footage shits because honestly going with white people to an island bitch girl it was too much but basically after the cruise we really was not in a better place <laughs> and it was it was shitty because it's like it seemed like the cruise was like a fake ass vacation where like everything didn't matter we like like we just had some real genuine good times um and it was just unfortunate because i i feel like if you if you're not gonna fight on vacation that's a good sign you know that you're not fighting during vacation but when you're fighting every day it's kind of like it don't really matter (laughs) you know what i mean so i just felt kind of like you know even though the cruise we survived you know yeah, the cruise was a, a wild time, honestly. Um, but so, um, at some point, um, Bob and I had a conversation where I was telling him that I was gonna move out and I was gonna like, you know, go. And he was kind of just like, you know, word, but like he didn't believe me. Like he pretty much was just like on some like, okay, whatever you say. But he wasn't really seeing me do nothing towards that. And low key, my ass was on my phone plotting and watching and ready and doing me and doing the things that I got to do. So I'm on the phone, you know, I'm linking up with uh, with Chris and I'm going out with Chris and I'm having a good time with him. And I'm just like doing my thug dizzle. But at some point, you know, Chris is pretty much just like, yo, um, <laughs> you're totally fine, bitch. You're totally fine. Oh my god. I'm fucking done. So, at some point, Chris and I have a conversation where Chris is like, yo, like, do you still have a your ex? And part of me was kind of just like, you know, I didn't want to say, you know, I didn't want to be like, yes, you know, I didn't want to, you know, go in and be real about my situation because to be honest, like, I felt like I was so close, you know, I felt like I was so close for, I was stuck, but I felt like, I feel like I was so close to like being with Chris and like changing my like whole setup and situation that I just didn't want to blow up my whole shit by being like, yeah, like I'm still living with my ex. So... I popped out and I was like, you know, yes, I am still living with my ex, but I'm only still living with him because I owe him money because he bailed me out when I was in jail. And so this nigga was looking at me kind of crazy because like, again, we met up like originally when I was like fucking 17, 18. So he hadn't seen me in like three fucking years. So for all he know, I could really be have be a jail bitch. So he was kind of looking at me kind of crazy, but you know he was still engaged in the story. So I had him where I needed him to be. So him and I at some point, um, excuse me, at some point, right at this point. So he's like looking at me kind of crazy, like what the fuck, what the fuck's going on? And so I started telling him, you know, I was like, yeah. I was like, you know, when, you know, me and Bob linked up after you and I didn't work out, you know, I had to let him know the time frame. I was like, yeah, me and me, you ain't work out. So, you know, I linked up with Bob and, you know, things were going good at first. But then I started noticing, you know, homie was, you know, doing coke. And when I first found out, you know, I was already with him for so long that I didn't want to just leave him. I didn't want to just abandon him. I definitely want to be there for him, be his rock. And so, you know, when I noticed, you know, his habit getting really bad, I went to go and see his dealer. And I was like, as soon as I got, you know, into, you know, as soon as I got into, you know, a situation with meeting his dealer, you know, his dealer and I spoke, and his dealer actually told me that he had a debt that he owed. So... Once I found out that my nigga was owing money to this dude, I knew that I had to do something, but I didn't have any money. So I offered to work for him. I offered to sell coke for him, you know, just for a little bit, just so I could get my nigga's debt paid off, and I was going to get out the game. And so his eyes are wide open, like, he's like... Bitch. And so he's eating this up like this is real life. And the real the real tea is, girl, I'm just living with a nigga that I fucking hate. <laughs> and I really just want to leave. But, you know.
Larry the Saint. And I was like, oh. So he's all up in the story. I'm letting him know, you know, I'm 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 working for this dude. You know, I'm working for this dude. You know, I'm out here selling Tokyo in Tokyo. You know what I mean? I'm flying all around the world. But I'm basically more so letting him know that I was the main coke runner um, at Boston Harbor. I made up this whole elaborate tale about how I was on the, how I was like the one who got on the boats and made sure all the coke was there, made sure all the money was there, all the shit was right. Um, and then, you know, I said that one night, you know, I'm in my, you know, I'm in my little shipyard outfit, you know, with my little knife, you know, cause I was like, I don't carry guns. That was never me. You know what I mean? In the middle of the story, you gotta just come out with like a moral story. Like, you know, I don't fuck with guns. <laughs> like, I was never shooting people. I was just shanking. So I, I was like, I gotta have my little dagger. You know, I have my little shipyard outfit. You know, I was getting on the boats, you know, checking shit. You know what I mean? Checkings, 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 checkings. All right. And I said one night, you know, I got on the boat. And I could tell they didn't have the coke. And I could tell they didn't have the money right. And so, you know, I went to go and call my dude. And all of a sudden, you know, I hear shots. I hear shots from outside the boat. So I'm trying to just dip and dodge. I'm trying to get out of there. But I'm on the boat already. So I jump in the water. And I'm swimming. I'm swimming. I'm swimming towards the light. And as soon as I go to get onto the onto the docks, you know, I go to climb up, you know, upper body strength. I go to get on top of the dock. You know, my knife is wet, and someone's trying to snatch me. You know, I'm trying to I'm trying to fight. You know, I'm able to throw the man. I'm able to throw him across. He's getting in the water too, cause he fell. And then I'm running, girl. I'm running. I seen D E A F D I C I A K F C. Popeyes, all of them. I seen them swarming. They was coming. And I knew they was coming for me. All right? And I ain't no motherfucking snitch. So I had to zoom, zoom. I had to get the fuck. So I'm running, I'm zooming, I'm running, I'm zooming. I'm getting out of there, you know. My walkie talkie was wet. I couldn't call my nigga. I couldn't call Vladimir. <laughs> Literally. So I'm over here. So so at this point, homeboy eating popcorns, Michael Jackson meme, bitch. He out here like can't even believe. Can't even motherfucking believe, bitch. He's just like, wow, this is a real bitch. Like she is out here doing crimes. And so he's looking at me like he just wanna suck my titties and eat my pussy, bitch. Like he, like some white dudes is into violence and crimes and stuff. You know, I be noticing that shit. That's not cute, but they be into that shit. That's weird. But anyways, they have a little uh, criminal fetish. This idea of like, you know, just I don't know, just some brawling wildness. Exactly, anything to feel a rush. Exactly, their lives be mediocre, bitch. So, he's really feeling this shit. He is really gagging on my eleganza. He's gagging on this story, bitch. And so, he's he's pretty much, you know, caught up in my juice. So, then he's like, wait. He's like, so, why you live with your ex? Because, you know, he ain't no dumb nigga. I'm going to be real. I'm going to give him that. He not dumb. But, I had to go ahead and, you know, again... Do what I was doing, which is redirecting the motherfucking story. So then I said, well, look, I got picked up by the police. I wasn't able to get away. They confiscated my knife and my walkie-talkie. Instead of snitching, I went to jail. I had to stay in there for about six months. Everybody forgot about me. My commissary was dry. Nobody was on my call list. I ain't get no letters. I was doing bad. I was ashy. My lip hair started to get out of control. I had a lace front on that was sewn into my head that I couldn't cut out because I didn't have access to scissors. So when the hair finally grew out, it looked like my brain was exposed and just pulsating out of my goddamn head. So how about that? So anyways, this is so like your dirt. Good night. <laughs> bitch, you try growing a lace front out in prison, bitch. So listen. So I'm doing bad clearance.
clearly, you know, he's feeling bad for me. He's just like, damn, bitch, you went through a lot. Your lace front grew out in prison for six months. <laughs> he couldn't believe, you know, it's a lie, but he couldn't believe. Um, so...
Don't fucking Bob, bitch. Treacherous. I know. I was fucking Bob and I was fucking Chris. I was not using condoms with Bob because we had been fucking for years. I was using condoms with Chris. However, at some point, you know, I started to just feel terrible as fuck, like, in, in my spirit. Because I was just like, wow, I am really out here, you know, coming home, fucking with Bob, leaving, fucking with Chris, wildin'. At some point, as I said, Chris had surprised me by asking me if I want to spend the weekend. He was like, I cleaned my place, like, everything's perfect, I want to cook you dinner, all these things. And it was payday. So when I got off work, Chris was waiting for me. And it was crazy because Bob was working late. So Bob had texted me saying, I'm working late, do you want to do that acid tonight? And I said, maybe. And then, you know, and I'm in the car with Chris, bitch. And we going far the fuck away. Because he was living a little bit in the secluded little little fucking jungles of motherfucking Massachusetts, bitch. So I'm texting Bob like, maybe, girl. I don't know. So when I got a message from this person in particular, I so... I made Chris take me to, like, every place before we, like, leave the city. I'm like, no, I want to go here, I want to go here, I want to go here. I made him stop and let me go and go to this bakery. I made him stop and take me to this pizza place. Like, I made him stop a million places, like, just so I can get everything I needed to go and enjoy myself. I totally forget about this whole situation with Bob and the acid, right? It just didn't look like it was all the way done, and they just sat his ass out there. With Max, the exactly. Ain't no motherfucking, ain't no corner store, bitch. So, I got all the snacks so I can go fucking, uh, you know, play like I'm in the woods and shit. Like, I fuck with that. So, we leave the city. He had a bird. He had a bird. Get this place. And I remember, like, when I got into his apartment, the first time I'd ever gone to his apartment, it was weird, because, like, it was dirty. And it was dirty in this way that was, like, he just hadn't, like, cleaned since an event. Like, you could tell an event had happened in the space, but he hadn't cleaned since that event. And he told me that he had it cleaned because his cousin had went to jail, and he wanted to, like, leave it the way it was when he last saw his cousin. And I'm like, oh, bitch, okay. And I was like, at the time, as I said, I was like 18, he was like 24, so I was kind of just like, I live your life, you know what I mean? Like, what do you say, bitch? I don't, I don't live here full time. You do. So, basically, it wasn't even like it was a trash heap, it just looked like some niggas had been there, just chilling, doing stuff. Girl, I had no idea. I think it's just a couple months, girl. It wasn't, nothing, it wasn't no fucking free wheezy. It wasn't no going to November. So it wasn't that fucking deep. So, anyways. I'm done. So this nigga, um, I never seen a roach. I'll say that. I feel like all the niggas I fucked with so far, knock on wood, fake wood, I have not seen no fucking roach. And I'm grateful because I feel like I wouldn't know how to act. I'm the type, if I see a roach one time, I might not come back. Unless I have to. He was, like, preserving it. <laughs> I don't know, bitch. I'm not making no excuses. I'm just, I'm just telling you what he said, bitch. I was dead, too, bitch. I love it too much. So when I went to his house at this point, now that I was 21, he, like... When I walked in, you could smell it was mad clean. Like, you could smell the cleanness. It was, like, some fucking, like, fresh linen spray or something. And, like, you know, his carpets, just, like, vacuums. Like, everything just, like, looking really nice. And so, I was kind of like, damn, like, he grew up. Like, that's cute, you know? And so, <laughs> galactic guess. I didn't even think about it. <sighs> So, I don't know why I thought my nose is bleeding. Scary. So, basically, thank 
you. Thank you for everyone that's going to bless me, because I know, like, five people are going to bless me, so thank you in advance. I appreciate, I appreciate, I appreciate, I said love, I said love, I said love. Thank you for blessing me. I appreciate. So, fucking, <laughs> thank, thank you, thank you for blessings upon me. Thank you for, shed, for shedding blessings upon me. Um, thank you, thank you. What up, Miss Adrian? So, I'm so dead. So, homie basically popped out, um, you know, with some drinks. Like, bitch, he has Ciroc. He had, like, mad alcohol in his fridge. And, like, uh, in his freezer, rather. And then he had food. Like, real food in his fridge. And he was making me, like, chicken piccata. And I was like, what the fuck? And, like, it was just so dope. And I was just like, yo... I was like, I needed this, and he was giving me a neck rub, and at some point, we were, like, sitting on his couch, and, like, we're making out, and he starts, like, rubbing my damn pussy through my, through my leggings, bitch, and I can't lie, like, I live for, like, over the clothes, like, foreplay, I live for, like, a nipple graze over, like, a, a nice silk shirt, or a nice, you know, muslin blouse, you know, so I feel like he started, like, rubbing my pussy, like, real soft, like, through these fucking torrid leggings, bitch, girl, the poom poom got wet, girl, it was too much, I couldn't take it, I was like, ah, his name was Timothy, so I was like, Tim, 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 so, at some point, um, you know, I'm like, I'm getting tipsy as fuck, and he was rolling up too, like, he could roll, it was cute, and so we were getting high, we were getting drunk, we were like, foreplaying it, and at some point, you know, we go into his room, and he's like, I just want to eat your pussy, like, he's like, I don't want to do nothing else, and I was like, okay, and so, at the time, I was a little bit, like, still, I was still a little insecure, like, I'd only had, like, one person eat my pussy before, and I didn't really like it that much, because, like, I don't know, I just felt like he was a little bit too aggressive about it, and I would have to stay, like, punching him in the face like a shark, so, I felt like, honestly, like, with this dude, you know, I kind of felt like, you know, what is this gonna be like, and so, when he was sucking on my pussy, it was wild, because, like, I mean, to describe my vagina, it's like, my labias are shaped, like, very circularly, and then, like, my clit is, like, in there, like, it's just very adorable, like, honestly, like, so adorable, you drop your weed, and so... At first, like, he, like, sees my vagina and takes a moment and looks, and then he's just like, your pussy is mad adorable, and I was like, thank you, and so right then and there, like, my pussy just got instantly wet, because my pussy is just a sucker for flattery, loves compliments, and so it was just gushing, and so... He started getting into it, started sucking on it, started, like, just doing all types of things. Listen, it worked for me, bitch. It worked for me, bitch. It worked for me. I love corny. I love corny. I really do. I, like, I feel like that's, like, those are, that's, like, the caliber of who I date, corny niggas. I'm trying to, like, you know, get up to, like, dry wit, um, sarcastic, you know, but I'm down here. I'm down here with corny. Um, so... You know, so he's all up in my pussy, killing it, you know what I mean, just doing the damn thing, and then we start making out, and like, yo, as I said, he was a cologne nigga, so he smelled so fucking good, I was dying, bitch, and he had, like, he did, like, scissors on top, like, buzzers on the side, he was a Sagittarius, um, and so I was, like, like, just snatched on his hair, no, he was, I think he was, no, yeah, he was a Sagittarius, Who's a November Sag? So, like, we were having, like, so much, like, just fun. And, you know, at first, you know, like, the fucking was lit. Like, but, bitch, when I was getting texts during the fucking, I was scared. Because, like, I was like, oh, shit. And I go to go check my text, and he was a very, like, wild Sagittarius. So he was just watching me intently the whole time, and I could feel him. And so Bob was like, you know, like, are you coming? And I was like, yes. And he was like, when? And I was like, soon, I'm at work. And then he was like, you're not at work because I went to your job. And I was like, ah! And then he was like, you're not coming home, are you? And 
I was like, no. And then he was like, I already did my tab of acid. And I was like, I'm sorry. And so he's like tripping. And he's texting me like, please come here. Please come here. Please come home. And like, I literally just like put my phone down and just got my pussy sucked again. I literally was like, no, mm -mm. I don't have time for this. And so when I was getting my pussy sucked again and I was nutting for like my fifth time, I checked my phone (laughs) and homie had texted his mom and he was like, my mom's coming. And I was like, fuck, because his mom already hated me. So I already knew that this would only make his mother hate me more. I mean, honestly, like, I was already stepping out. Like, I'm going to fuck up this whole beautiful time of my pussy getting sucked for a nigga that I'm, like, trying to leave. Mm -mm, No. So his mom was, like, texting me and calling me a bitch and da-da-da and, like, telling me to come get my stuff. And I was like, pump your brakes a little bit because, like, you're not going to, you're not doing anything to me. And sure enough, you know, when I got back to the spot, he was there and he was chill, but he was mad as fuck, obviously. (laughs) Like, when I first came through, he was kind of like, were you with Timothy? And I said, yes, I was. And he was just like, so are y'all together? And I was like, yep. And he's like, so are you going to go live with him? And I was like, probably. And then he was like, word. He was like, do what's best for you. And I was like, I will. And then he's like, do you know how embarrassing it was for me to have to call my mom? And I was like, well, at least you have a mom to call. <laughs> and I just walked the fuck off. Because it's like, bitch, I can't call my mom. Let me OD on some other fucking acid. I can't call my mom. <clears throat> So I was like, bitch, live your best fucking life. So I literally was just like stanky to him like for like the rest of the day. But then eventually like him and I had a conversation. I think I also fucked him again so that he would like not hate me. I was like, you know, you know, I did the thing where I was like, your dick is better than his. And like low key, it wasn't. But like, you know, sometimes you say things, you know. Sometimes you say things to, like, make the other person feel like they're still a winner, you know? Not your winner, but a winner still nonetheless. And so, I was wildin', and I fucked homie, and I was just like, I still fuck with you. Exactly. I was like, get back into this pussy boy. And so, when it came time for me to move out, it was really stealth. It was really fucking stealth. Like, I pretty much waited until Bob went to work, and I called Chris, and I was like, come through. Come get me. Come through. So we got all my shit, girl. Packed it up. I had this man in his house, girl. I had Chris in Bob's house, girl. And, you know, Chris was hating. Chris was like, damn, this is cute. And I was like, it is cute, but it doesn't matter because I wasn't happy here. And he's like, are you happy with me? And I said, I'm very happy with you. And that's why I'm going with you. And that's why I'm with you. Because I'm happy. I'll call him Chris if I want to, bitch. I'll do what I want. I'm going to call him Chris now out of spite for you. (laughs) Because I'm petty. If you know it and you know that you are petty, bitch. Because I'm petty. (laughs) I'm sorry, bitch. Anyways, his name is Timothy. (laughs) Anyways, so, look, bitch, girl, girl. So, anyways, so Timothy, crush So, Timothy and I ended up going to, you know, his place. And it was cute. We were playing house for a little bit. But if this... Oh the, oh, the signal's good. Oh, hallelujah. I was like, I was going to be like, girl, re, like, restart your connection. <laughs> oh, I'm bad. Because I'm petty. <laughs> it's your grindery. This is your grindery. No, I'm high as fuck. Well. I'm glad the signal's good, though. Well, Sydney's also sleeping, not watching no motherfucking Netflix, bitch. No shade. That's what we killing it. 
this shit can only handle one device really doing some shit. So, um, I live for Mr. Brown, bitch. I am Mr. Brown. So, Mr. Brown is a Capricorn, you can tell. So, anyways, look. So, bitch, at the end of the motherfucking day, girl, like, me and Chris slash Timothy, <laughs> Crimothy, <laughs> Me and Crimothy was, you know, we was playing house, we was kicking it, was everything, was all that. But the shit started cracking. Because at first, you know, I was doing my little YouTube thing, living life. And I started noticing that Crimothy was hating on me. Like, I started noticing that, like, Crimothy felt like he owned my body. Like, it was really strange. Like, at one point, Crimothy popped off on me because I was wearing a shirt that exposed my thighs and I was just wearing that in a picture and he was like wow like is nothing for just me and I was like so he was really feeling like I was just giving my thighs to the world and the world was having my thighs it was very misogynistic but at the time I was kind of like where did I feel you so I kind of was like letting him like kind of you know Kanye me I let him throw out all my clothes girl make me wear just black and so he was basically trying to be extra and at one point I actually hit up a dude that I like never even fucked or nothing he just like was a friend and I was like look like I really ain't, like, fucking with, like, you no more like that. Just so you know, my man is uncomfortable about our friendship. <laughs> so, bye. And so, in ways, like, it's, like, whack to say this, but it's the truth. I kind of felt good about that. Like, it's fucked up to say that, but I felt good. It made me feel like a man was, like, taking charge of my life. Telling all the other niggas, kick rocks, you know, this is my bitch. And so, I kind of felt like, yes, like, I felt like a Power Ranger. I was like, yeah, my man said, I can't fuck with you no more. Because I'm fucking with him. Bye. You know what I mean? I was feeling, I was just empowered by the motherfucking misogyny, bitch. I know it ain't shit. I know it ain't shit. But at the time, I'm being honest. I'm being honest. So, basically, that was whack because, like, all the niggas that I, like, dated were, like, you know, they weren't, like, my best friends or nothing, but they were acquaintances, and it just didn't make sense to do that fucking shit for no fucking random nigga. But when you're young, bitch, you will make mistakes. You will make mistakes. Just so you know, bitch. All right, you will fuck with the wrong nigga sometimes. You know what I mean? You'll fuck with the wrong niggas. So, um, eventually... You know, I started to feel like a, a housewife, you know? I lost my job after that situation. Honestly, the shade of it all was I lost my job because of that situation. They, like, the people at my job actually liked Bob. They thought Bob was cool. So they was really feeling like, why'd you do that to Bob? You're a hoe. Like, they were angry. They were angry at me. They thought shamed me for living my best motherfucking life. And... It sucks whenever people involve themselves, um, you know, in other people's relationships like that, and they start to feel like, you know, oh, like, you did this person wrong. It's like, y'all don't even fucking know this nigga, like, for real. Like, what the fuck? So it was, like, really weird to me that they fired me for that shit, because, like, they, there literally was no reason to fire me. But they were basically, like, trying to say that I was being dramatic at the job, but really, my ex was being dramatic at the job. Bob was trying to pop up at the job, trying to see if I was there, trying to see what was popping, was telling people at the job all this tea and <clears throat> it was just too fucking much it was too much I don't know if it was mammy zone I just think it was more like they just like chose a dude over me Bob was an Aries and so basically um, and Aries and Capricorn are not supposed to vibe actually so, um, when did I say Bob was a Gemini? Does he, where are your facts from? Did you just pull it out of your ass? You just, uh, just commenting a comment? When did I say he was a Gemini? Never. I was guessing. <laughs> I like fucking with you, honestly. Um, anyways, so... <laughs> Exactly. <sighs> Anyways, so <sighs> as 
some point, you know, I was broke as fuck. And so when I got my last check, you know, I wanted to hook up my, my man with a, like a good dinner, you know? And so Timothy, Crimothy, um, came home and I said, Hey babe, he said, I said, can we go to Walmart? And he was like, yeah, but I am buying you shit. And I was like, bloop, bloop. So that shit really fucked me up. So, honestly, bitch, that was after this story, bro. I said the story happened before Uber, bro. Desi. Doing the most. As I said, the IG Live people love to do the most. So just keep that in mind. If you're the, if you're on the Periscope side of things, the IG Live people love to do the most. They love to say some crazy things. They love to derail the conversations. It's just a thing that happens with the IG Live people. Because you want to know what it is? I think it's because they know there's a time limit. So they try to say everything. They try to say everything. They try to just, you know, get through a little 15 minutes. They try to get through a little 15 minutes. I'm telling you, they be doing the most in the comments sometimes. They be doing the fucking most. But, I'm going to come. I'm going to come. I'm going to come. I'm going to come. I'm going to say what I say. Because I ain't telling no lie, bitch. I ain't telling no lie. I ain't telling no lie. Periscope, they be chilling. We get a couple trolls, it's whatever. But it's always the IG people that be talking shit. So anyways, bitch, I'm high. I'm talking shit. Let me live my peace. True. True. Look at cunty with a word. So, <laughs> Miss Adrian, you know what? I fuck with it, though. There needs, there's all types. There's all types. There's, there's all types, but you know, though, the IG crew, the IG crew, I feel like is the coolest crew, though. Like, as much as I fuck with Periscope, IG is the coolest when it comes to the jokes. Um, I'm done. So, okay, um, long shot. Can we stay on topic, girl? Can we please stay on topic, bitch? That's all I'm asking. I'm trying to tell this story and go the fuck to sleep. So, um, please don't be asking people if they remember some shit. Please don't be asking people some random fucking questions. Please don't be doing that. Let's stay on fucking topic. I got love for my niggas, but come on. Um, if you want to do your own live and ask people questions, please do that, bitch. I empower you, bitch. I will tell, I will shout you out. I will let people know that you got your live popping. Let me know. So, um, Walmart. <laughs> so this nigga told me he not gonna fucking buy me nothing at fucking Walmart, bitch. I'm he not gonna fucking spend no fucking money, bitch. Knowing that I'm on the hard times. So I was not feeling that fucking shit. I was fucking irked. I was hurt. I was feeling some type of motherfucking way. So look. So I was like, well, hmm. Fuck you, ho. So I made him a good-ass dinner, bitch. I put a lot of motherfucking spices in it, bitch, just to fuck up his whole ecosystem inside of his stomach. I wanted him to feel terrible, bitch. I wanted him to feel sick, all right? And that's what I did. I don't give a fuck, bitch. I put a lot of extra motherfucking tahini sauce, girl. I put some fucking, um, some sriracha in that shit. You know how the whites love sriracha, bitch. I, I made a sriracha blend with the motherfucking tomato sauce. You couldn't tell if it was tomato or sriracha. So it was burning your ass. So it was fucking you up and so he ate that shit you know what i mean spicy going in spice spicy going in spicy going out and so he was on the toilet he was feeling some type of way and so later that night you know what i mean i was on my phone texting my ex because my ex ain't never played me about going to no fucking walmart and spending no motherfucking money and i ain't like i didn't like the way that shit felt i was like wow like i chose and the thing is bitch why well, would you go see a tarot card reader in the middle of everything trying to ask a tarot card reader who should i choose bitch gonna waste twenty dollars of my life talking about it don't matter just choose the best path for yourself bitch you didn't help me bitch i should slap the dog shit out of you because that's fucked up but anyways fuck you rosa for life so i chose this nigga and now i was feeling kind of whack about it because i was like damn like bob would never have me out here tripping about motherfucking walmart so i'm texting bob and you know as i said like me and me and uh timothy were, were, were together for a couple months so bitch i literally didn't know who to choose girl i was feeling fucked up and so 
when I finally started contacting Bob, Bob was living a cute life. Bob had started working out. Bob had stopped drinking coffee. Bob had started eating skinny cow. Like, Bob had started doing a lot of different things, bitch. Bob started doing the P90X girl out of nowhere. And so, I was kind of like... He was very brand new. Bob was buying Nikes, bitch. Bob was tracking his motherfucking... He, Bob was going running. Bob was tracking his motherfucking... Uh, his jogs. I was like... Bob could jog? Bitch, I've never seen Bob do a fucking a saunter. That nigga be trotting. He trots. I ain't know Bob could run. So, basically, this nigga started, you know, to kind of make me feel kind of like, well, bitch, you know, like, he, he didn't make me feel goofy, but he definitely was like, you know, why should we try again, you know, he was basically like, you moved out, you know, you were done with me. I'm on some other shit. And I was like, that's real, but I miss you. And I feel like we're supposed to be together. <laughs> like, I literally hit him with, bitch, I feel like you're my destiny, though. So fuck all that shit. Fuck all that shit you talking, bitch. Like, you're, you're my blessing. You're my blessing. We need to get back together. We need to get back together, please, Jesus Christ. Like, I was like, let's get back together. But I, was, I don't think I was begging. I think I was just kind of like, I miss you. I like, I miss you so much. I like, and so he was kind of just like, well, we'll see, like, if you really do miss me, da da And so, <clears throat> we started texting a little bit here and there. I'm sorry, I'd be hearing murders outside and shit, so I gotta stop sometimes, because I may, might be called to be a witness to some shit. I'm waiting, I'm waiting for a note on my door, like, on the night of the 13th. Did you hear a bitch screaming for help? <laughs> and I'll have to be like, I really did. Because I'm not going to lie. Um, so, anyways, um, bitch, <laughs> me, and, me and Bob started texting heavy, bitch. And it got to the point where, like, I put a lock on my phone, bitch. Now, I never had a lock on my phone in my whole life. But when I put the lock on my motherfucking phone, oh, Timothy knew what the fuck it was. So this little sneaky bitch gonna wait till I'm I'm putting the phone down. Girl, exactly. So I'm putting the phone down. Escandalo, exactly. So I put the phone down, but it don't. I don't hit the home screen. I just check my text and put it down. This nigga waited till I was like in my sleep to pick up the phone and go through it, girl. Bitch. So he's going through my phone and he's reading all the texts. Girl, why I woke up to him throwing the phone on my chest. I woke up to the phone just hitting my chest. It was a it was a goddamn blackberry, bitch. He threw a blackberry at my chest. Almost killed me. Almost killed me. Almost killed me, bitch. With the phone, girl. And so, when I woke up, he was like, look at your phone. Now, bitch, it's my phone. I know what's on there. <laughs> well, I gotta look at it, bitch. I hated that shit. Cause he gonna tell me to look at the phone, bitch. I'm like, for why? I know that I'm a treacherous, snaky hoe. Nothing to see. Like that's just how I feel. Like I was just like, and so I start going through the phone, bitch. I do the sneakiest shit. As I'm going through the phone, I start deleting shit. I'm like, look, you don't know what you saw. You don't remember. Goodbye. <laughs> I was like, delete, delete, 
delete, delete, delete, delete, delete. As I'm going through, I'm like acting like I'm going through a face journey. I'm like, delete, <laughs> delete, delete, delete. Girl, fuck that. So as I'm deleting the motherfucking evidence, homeboy's like, what the fuck? You still talking to your ex? And I was like, barely. I was like, sometimes. And then he's like, why? And I was like, because. I was like, sometimes you make me feel like shit. And I just feel like he doesn't make me feel like shit. And he goes, no, you only fuck with him because he got money. And I was like, maybe so. I didn't say that shit. But I was like, no. I was like, I was like, sometimes I miss him. I was like, sometimes I miss someone that can, like, take care of me and, like, do nice things for me and not have to trip. And he's, like, honest, like, and then he starts, like, making me feel like I'm ungrateful, talking about, I pay for this, I pay for that, I pay for a wiffle ball bat, all these things. And I'm just kind of, like, okay, but, like, we don't do nothing fun together. Like, I'm just trying to let him know that, like, you know, this has been fun, but it's not been real fun. And I just feel like we got to got part ways I think you know I was just kind of like I don't know what to say like I was like Ron's hot I'm attracted like that's really what, what I was like I was on some motherfucking Sammy sweetheart shit where I was like I don't know what to tell you and so we start arguing and it's like late at night like it's like two o'clock in the morning and so at some point we go into the living room and like it's dark in his apartment girl and so I could feel that he wanted to hit me. Like, he was getting so close to me. And I could tell, like, he wanted to put his hands on me so bad. And it kind of scared me. But he never put his hands on me. But I thought that I thought he wanted to hurt me. And he just, like, went back into the bedroom. And he brought my suitcase out. And he said, pack your shit. And I was like, okay. And the whole time I'm packing my shit, I'm, like, texting Bob, like, yo. Hey, <laughs> hello, 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 welcome to the Illusions Lounge, the fucking Interior Illusions Lounge, so I'm literally, like, texting Bob, like, dog, like, what are you doing, like, I didn't lead with, hey, I need you to rescue me, I literally was like, what are you up to tonight, <laughs> and so this nigga gonna hit me back with, I'm on a yacht, with my boss drinking champagne bitch and you know what I did my trifling ass I was like well could you get off the boat cause I need you to come pick me up And again, this was so long ago. This is this is when original Ford Locos was out, bitch. Original Ford Locos, not this bullshit they got now. Original OG Ford Loco. So I bought two OG Ford Locos. I wasn't sure if he was gonna want to drink with me. I wasn't sure if he was gonna want to get in on this. I was in Massachusetts. So I'm drinking my four loco, waiting for him to pull up, you know, and bitch, when he pulls up, girl, I just felt that same old thing, girl. I felt that same old thing. Like, as soon as he pulled up and he got out the car, I was like, he was looking so good. Bitch, and he was one of those dudes that went, like, kind of OD with the cologne, but it never smelled too wild. Like, he had a very light scent, but he would, like, have it to where when he, like, walked, the wind would just pick it up, bitch. Like, you could stand next to him and get that whiff on you. Like, it'll just get on you, bitch. And so, he was smelling so fresh, bitch. I think it was an Egyptian motherfucking musk or some shit. I was like, come through Egyptian musk. Ghost 5150, maybe so. So anyways, 
homeboy decided that, you know, he was going to sit in front of me looking gorgeous as fuck. First of all, also, bitch, let me get into his outfit, girl. He came up to meet me, bitch, in a suit. Girl. I'm talking black sport coat, black slacks, goes 5150. You are looking like a damn slimer. You gotta go. And so... <laughs> to a park, bitch. But we weren't. But me and my ex, Bobby, we were. As I said, we were not. We were both not happy. But I think he, again, as I said, it was working out. So I think like we were both kind of just like whatever. So when me and Chris. That's where a long shot. I can't relate. So me and Chris, um, do you please agree? So me and Chris started reconnecting again, right? And it got to a point where I wanted to meet up. And so because I wanted to meet up, you know, I had to be cost breakers. You know what I mean? I had to be kind of slick because I had because I was like I was dating Bob, like we were together. And so you know when you're dating somebody, they be knowing where the fuck you be at and shit. You know, and then if you date somebody long enough, they be knowing when you're not where the fuck you're supposed to be, bitch. They be knowing too much. So Bob, it had to be very low key. So I lied to Bob. I told Bob, I did a lot of lying um, in this situation. So I told Bob that I was going to work on a Saturday. I never worked Saturdays. So on Saturday, what I did is I left the house in the middle of the afternoon when Bob was out doing something with his family. And I took the bus. Yes. No evidence. No Uber report. Because at the time... I don't, actually, bitch, I don't even think Uber was a thing. I think we were taking cabs and shit. This was a long time ago, bitch. This was before Uber. So, I was like, I took the bus, bitch. I took public transport. Threw away my ticket. <laughs> so, anyways. Him and I met at this fucking park near my job. And I had stopped at the liquor store because I was nervous. And I was like, what, what do you do when you get nervous? Get a little tipsy, you know? Because I figured, like, I'll get a little tipsy to have a personality drink. And then I'll go meet up with this guy who was, like, the love of my life and who I wanted to lose my virginity to. So, no pressure, you know? No, no big deal. Galactic Phobos. Do you really think I came here to talk about being a cake boss? Really? If you don't get your ass back to TLC. And girl, ain't nobody calling you, girl. That is so sad, girl. When they just be popping up like, call this number. No one's calling you, girl. So some of y'all have heard this story on IG, but I thought it was fitting for the Periscope fam. Um, this is just some regular ass lip gloss. I don't know about no teeth gloss. No, no teeth gloss. But it's pinkalicious. Long shot. Exactly, bitch. Exactly. What wig review? What are you talking about? What wig? What's going on? Bitch, how you gonna come into a video that's a story time and ask me about a fucking wig, though? I'm fucking dead. And I'm rocking natural right now. I can't even do a wig review if I wanted to. 
Where's the wig gonna go? Girl. Honestly, I couldn't find no bad pictures of RuPaul from the motherfucking main stage. And I didn't want to take no shitty ass picture on my damn MacBook. That was not going to be the way for me. So, that's what happened. Again, I don't know why people ask me fucking questions on the story time. Can we get back to the motherfucking story time, bitch? Like, honestly. Like, y'all see how fucking selfish the motherfuckers from IG are? That's why I'm on Periscope now. Because I'm trying to get some new people to fuck with me. Because I feel like the people on IG selfish. They be, like, thinking that I owe them shit. They be thinking they could just question me about shit that I didn't do. Just try to come for me all the time. <laughs> so real talk, like I need some new niggas come through to the IGs. They be bullying me, bitch. They be coming for me for no reason. They be dragging with no wagon, bitch. Like honestly. So come through to the IGs. Help me. <laughs> help me. Some of them be acting up. <laughs> No tea, no shade, no pink lemonade. So look, let me get into this. As I said, I have already told the story. Exactly, come through with the shrimp. I have already told the story to other people on the IG. So the IG people are going to be extra through the story because they already heard it. So they're going to be like, we heard it. So the Periscope family, thank you for joining us. Thank you for being here. Thank you for accepting me. All right, so... At the time, I was a young Tatiana, all right? I was out here. I was, I was, you know, this is going to sound fucked up, but I was feeling secure in a relationship that I did not want to be in, girl. And there's nothing like being secure in a relationship that is bad. There's nothing like being with somebody and it's actually not fruitful to you, but it's working out. Like, somehow it's working out, but this shit is not where you want to be. It's not good. It's just, it's just seemingly convenient. Um, and with that being said, you know, I was clearly unhappy in this relationship, but instead of leaving, my goofy ass decided to entertain an old flame. Now, I obviously need names for these characters, so people, please help me in the comments. I need a character for the Nick, for the old nigga. I need a care. I need a name for the old nigga, a name for the new nigga. So who's the, what's the name of the old nigga? What's the name of the OG? Bob, okay. We're gonna go with Bob. And we're gonna go with Chris for the second dude because it's more believable. I'm not gonna say Daquan. These are both white men. Anyways, so Bob and I were just having a very stale, boring ass, boiled pork chop ass relationship. And so, you know, when my, when I heard from Chris, because that's the thing, Chris actually came before Bob. I'm not trying to be M. Night Shyamalan, but let me tell you right now, this is a plot motherfucking twist, girl. Yes, Chris was the main before Bob, girl. Chris was the nigga that I wanted to give my oils to. For y'all that don't know Philly slang, oils is pussy juice. So I wanted to give him my puss juice. Um, and, you know, for whatever reason, I don't want to go into that backstory with Chris. But Chris and I happened to get into a car accident, girl. That was his fault, girl. But I could see how he could feel some type of way about me. Um, and then we ended up reconnecting through the internet, of course. You know, the wonderful why and the weird. Um, so... When him and I actually linked back up, he told me that he had stopped communicating with me because the car accident made him feel embarrassed. And I could understand that in retrospect, but to be quite honest, when he said that, all my old feelings came back. All of my old feelings resurfaced. And it was at that point, you know, that we were communicating that I started to feel like me and Bob were going to really be done. And I was 
was happy, but I feel like I wasn't strong enough. You know how you ever be in a relationship and you don't feel like you're strong enough to just leave? Like how you feel like you gotta have like an army, a tribe, like a companion to help you get the fuck out of that shit. So I really was just feeling like I was getting closer to Chris because I knew me and Bob was not really, we was not working out and I knew Chris wanted me in a way that Bob could never want me. You know what I mean? Like Bob wanted me because I was good on paper. You know, I made him probably like, to be honest, I feel like my ex, I think low key he was a feeder. I don't know for sure, but he fed me a lot of food. (laughs) And I'm just saying like, I don't know if that was his pleasure, but he really did hook it up. 